Woo-wee, if this report turns out to be true, AMD could be in some serious trouble. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So recently there was an article posted over on Tweaktown that detailed some information shared over on Digitime surrounding a potential deal between TSMC and Intel. And this isn't just any deal, this is supposedly a deal for Intel to produce their high performance CPUs on TSMC's 3 nanometer node, or at least that's what it looks like. And if that is the case, well these CPUs from Intel could be extremely fast. I mean they could pack a whole bunch more cores, they could have you know pretty massive IPC gains as long as they do everything right, and they could be doing all this for a whole lot less less power. But before I get any further into that, let's first go over to Tweaktown and read some of the stuff that they posted over from Digitimes. Now, it starts off by saying that supposedly Intel and TSMC have, quote, already concluded negotiations on an outsourcing agreement. Unlike in the past where non-core products were outsourced to TSMC, the scale of these new orders are larger than expected and will use TSMC's 3 nanometer process slated to enter mass production in the second half of 2022. They then go on to say, quote, Intel has already signed a new outsourcing contract with TSMC in 2020. The largest order is for CPUs that will use TSMC's 3 nanometer process slated to enter mass production in the second half of 2020. Intel's technology manufacturing team has already visited Southern Taiwan Science Park several times in the past two years to understand the progress. Barring the unforeseen, Intel will adopt a dual-track manufacturing strategy. High volume production for new core product will be handled by TSMC, with Intel also simultaneously producing them internally, but at a smaller production. So I think this is really interesting, and like I mentioned earlier, this is going to be really big news if this does end up, you know, coming into play, and some of this might be because of their change of CEOs. Maybe um, their previous CEO, it could be, I have this completely speculation, but it could be that maybe they wanted to focus more on how much money they're making per chip, so they wanted to produce everything at Intel, because, you know, obviously, at least typically, if you produce something yourself, from the ground up, you're probably going to make more money on it unless the R&D is far more expensive and it's easier to go to someone else. I don't think that's the case with Intel, so they probably would make more money if they produce their CPUs completely themselves. And they also just, that way, don't have to worry about TSMC being overflowed with stuff from AMD, from Apple, from all these other companies and not having enough um, you know, room for Intel. But you know, with this new CEO over at Intel, maybe his idea of what's important is a little bit different. Maybe for him, in the long run, they'll actually make more money, at least this is the way he might be thinking if they go and outsource their CPUs so they can make the fastest CPUs on the market because at their current rate Intel is not going to be able to actually beat AMD if they continue having delay after delay after delay. I mean their biggest weakness right now is the fact that they're still on 14 nanometer for their desktop products and they are working on 10 nanometer and they're working on 7 nanometer and they've been promising for a long time that it's not going to be delayed and that it's going to be coming out soon but you know after seeing how many delays happened with their 10 nanometer process I mean can we really trust that they're not going to be further delays for 10 nanometer or even 7 nanometer products. I'm, I'm just not entirely sure about that. And even if they do get 7 nanometer out on time, they're probably going to be going against 5 or 3 nanometer from TSMC. So it might just be the smarter move. Maybe this is how Intel is thinking to, you know, instead of producing it on their own 10 or 7 nanometer node, produce their future chips over at TSMC, the super high performance desktop chips or maybe the server chips on 3 nanometer so they can get all those efficiencies so they can pack in more cores because because, you know, if you take a look at the 14 nanometer process, which we've been stuck on a long time, and it's trying to fight against AMD's current 7 nanometer TSMC process, it's really far behind. And they've been stuck on this, I believe, since 2014 with their Broadwell architecture. So, yeah, they are way, way far behind with their process technology. And I think that's Intel's biggest problem right now because they do actually have a very strong architecture with, you know, both the Skylake architecture. It's been strong. It's still strong. But as well as with their new Rocket Lake processors, you know, I think they have a very strong architecture and if they just had a better node to produce it on it would be much much better because you take a look at these 11 900k leaks that have been coming out here and you look at like the power draw i've been seeing things i think somewhere around like 250 watts max or even more hitting really high temperatures if you're trying to overclock them and then you look at you know amd on their tsmc 7 nanometer node and they're not having nearly the same amount of problems they're drawing a whole lot less power on both the desktop and the mobile so yeah intel's biggest problem is definitely its process nodes 
So if they can move from 14 nanometer, which they've been stuck on for what seems like, I believe somewhere between, you know, six and only, it's beyond six years. We're, you know, getting close to seven years at this point. Well, if they can finally move on from a process technology that's, you know, six to seven years old and move on to something that's like, you know, cutting edge and absolutely going to be super efficient, they could far more easily get big gains right now. So let's just say, for example, the Intel on their next generation of CPUs moves to TSMC three nanometer. Now, of course, that's probably not going to happen. It's probably going to be their 13th generation. If we're lucky, it's probably not going to be the 12th generation. But let's just say for a, a second here that Intel's 12th generation chips move to three nanometer. Here's what could happen. Instead of having an eight core or 10 core chip or, you know, eight cores that are big and eight cores that are small, they could pretty easily, in my opinion, move to just a huge 16 core CPU. They could get a bunch of IPC gains. So pretty much instantly overnight, they could double their multi-core performance. On top of that, they could probably get, you know, who knows, maybe 15 to 30 percent IPC gains, depending on what they do with their architecture, just because they have so much more transistors that they can pack into these TSMC three nanometer nodes than they can into their current 14 nanometer Intel node, which is far, far behind the TSMC three nanometer node. And at that point, if they're going against AMD with a 16 core processor versus a 16 core processor, and they both have very high IPC, I think Intel would actually pull ahead by probably a significant margin because you take a look at the 11900K and by all measures, it does look like it is going to slightly beat out, you know, AMD's current Ryzen 5000 series processors. So you can imagine if they get like, say, another 20% IPC jump on top of that or something, and then they also double their multi-core performance, which I don't think would be too much to ask for if you're moving, you know, that far in that short a time. Well, yeah, you could be looking at CPUs that could potentially be essentially crushing these Ryzen 5000 series processors. Now, of course, as good as that sounds, AMD's not going to be standing still this whole time. So AMD's not going to just be, you know, using their Ryzen 5000 series chips all the way up into 2022. They'll probably be on Ryzen 6000, maybe even Ryzen 7000 at that point. They may be moving on to TSMC 5 nanometer or even TSMC 3 nanometer as well. So things aren't going to stand still. But, you know, in my opinion, if Intel does move to 3 nanometer, if they do end up doing that, they could actually pull ahead of AMD once again, both in gaming performance as well as multi-core performance, even if AMD does continue making pretty big leaps year after year, especially since they have, you know, some new leadership over there. It looks like they're actually starting to try again. So, you know, either way you slice it, whether or not Intel does end up pulling ahead again uh, by a significant margin or if they just end up matching AMD, either way, it's really great for us because at Intel's current pace, if they try to get to their 10 nanometer and then 7 nanometer node and they're making these, you know, just really small jumps year after year and AMD continues to make large jumps, well, what's going to end up happening is that AMD is going to end up, you know, charging you more and more every single year. At least that's what I think would probably end up happening. You could end up paying instead of $850 for a 16 core processor from AMD, you could end up paying like $1,500. So to avoid that happening, whether or not you like Intel, it's good for everyone that they're actually seeming to be making some moves to take the desktop market seriously once again, because the thing that people don't understand is the desktop market is in some ways the most important market, because although it may not have the highest amount of sales, it might not be as lucrative as say mobile processors. Well, the thing that people don't understand often is that the people who buy desktop products are enthusiasts. The enthusiasts are people who tell everyone else what to purchase. They're the people who work on your products when you go into a shop. They're the people who build your systems. They're the people who tell you what products you should be purchasing. So if you can win the desktop market, not only does that allow you to scale things down, but it also allows you to essentially win the whole market because now you've won over the enthusiasts. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these Intel three nanometer leaks? Do you think it's gonna end up being true or do you think that AMD is gonna pull way ahead of Intel and you are gonna end up having to pay more for processors for from AMD. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also if you want to see more click here you won't be disappointed.